You're probably familiar with the term catfishing. People are adopting false identities online to gain trust, love, and sometimes even money. Tonight, a year-long Nightline investigation follows a trail of deceit like no other. And in this one, the victims were often celebrities, including tonight's Country Music Awards host Brad Paisley and his wife. For Brad and Kim, the chance to help a dying child seemed like a beautiful gift, until it all turned out to be an ugly lie. Here's ABC's David Wright. Wow, I want to be him. You could write a country song about the perils of online relationships. In fact, Brad Paisley did. I work down at the pizza pit and I drive a no Hyundai. His number one single, Online. In the music video, the original George Costanza, Jason Alexander, plays a sci-fi nerd who passes himself off online as the ultra-cool Paisley. What are the lyrics? How does it go? Online, the mountain Hollywood, I'm 6'5". I look damn good. I drive a Maserati, I'm a black belt in karate. I love a good glass of wine. You <laughs> know, those little stats. So much cooler, oh it's the idea of the fantasy world that the internet has become. But you've now experienced the dark side of that. Oh, yeah, and the dark side has been there all along. Brad and his wife, actress Kimberly Williams Paisley, had no idea just how dark it could get until they were sucked into a cruel and elaborate hoax, a hoax that left Kim paralyzed with fear. I felt so violated and scared. And Brad demanding justice. It's sort of like emotional terrorism. It all started with an email sent by a total stranger, one of thousands of emails, but this one stood out from a mother with her daughter's dying wish. She was eight years old and had neuroblastoma and um, had seen a movie of mine called The Christmas Shoes, said that her daughter um, had found great hope and inspiration from this movie. Always know that I'm gonna be right here. She said that her daughter had begged her to get in touch with me, so it sounded very sort of real. I read that and I thought, well, I would love to just talk to her and say hi. Talk they did by phone, email, and text. I heard this rustling and she put this little girl on the phone and said, this was Claire. Hi, my Kim, I just want to say thank you for letting me love you and thank you for being my miracle. And I remember this, this instinct in me thinking, what if this is a hoax? But it was so quickly trumped by an overwhelming feeling, what if it's not a hoax? And I have a chance to help this little girl. The Paisleys were in good company. A lot of people thought it was real. For the past year, Nightline has been piecing together evidence from other celebrities who were roped in. I have the email that was written to the Paisleys. I have an eight-year-old daughter who is suffering from end-stage cancer, neuroblastoma. Here's another one that was written to a gospel singer named Carmen Hope Thomas. It is stage four neuroblastoma. Basically the exact same thing that was written to uh, Natalie Grant, a singer. Nightline producer Alyssa Litoff is still finding victims. We've confirmed at least a dozen people, and there are at least a dozen more that we're working to confirm still. So who all is in your collection here? That's John Henson, the host of Wipeout. Famous faces, some of them. That's the band Little Big Town, Kate Goslin. And Kate Goslin actually dedicated an episode of her show? Yes, on the screen it said, in loving memory of hope. With Kate Goslin, we were the ones who told her that it was a hoax. She learned from us. When I received your email, it was, I, I yelled out loud. I mean, I said, Oh my gosh. At this point, the Paisleys were hooked. At this point, it was plausible. It was totally plausible to me, yeah. They weren't saying, can you send money? They weren't saying, can you come visit? They were just saying, we just want to, I just want to talk to you. And then it started to get weird. Jesus loves me, this I know. Supposedly at death's door, the little girl sang this song for Kim. And Brad got on the phone and sang to her. Amazing grace. You're singing to someone's dying kid. In the middle of it, there's like, there's no way that's not real. How can that not be real? And right when they're hooked, the hammer drops. They get the call they're now dreading. Little Claire is dead. The call came and it was very, very sort of uh, to the point and she just said she's gone. It's, you know, a parent's worst nightmare. And my wife started bawling. She hit my softest spot, like as a mother, you know, wanting my kids to be okay. Hi, um, it's just Carrie. I... The calls continued, got even more outlandish. 
I also wanted to know if there is a version of your husband singing Amazing Grace. I could use that for the service. Check out and, this message um, detailing plans for the funeral. Oh, and um, if it was okay to put your picture in the casket like she had requested. And um, I hope you have a really good weekend. And um, thank you for everything. Bye-bye. Almost immediately, the story started to unravel. I said, where can I send flowers for the funeral? And she didn't have an address for it. She said, oh, don't. Just, just send a donation to your local children's hospital. And I, I mean, I had like a physical reaction. Every red flag went up. And I remember just looking at people around me. Who is it? How many people were involved in this scam? And, and are, they, are they right here? Are they watching me right now? You were worried they might be a threat to you. Yes. This person was crazy. I watched my wife buckle when she realized this wasn't a real girl. You know, and I vowed that night, I said, I'm gonna find her. I, I'm going to find her and I'm gonna make sure that this person is not able to do this or isn't capable of doing worse. But this deception was bigger than the Paisleys even imagined. As Nightline dug deeper, it became clear the hoaxer wasn't just stalking celebrities, she was stalking cancer victims, stealing their photos and stories. We went to meet one family, the Thomases of Tiffin, Ohio. Their daughter, Christy, died in 2006 of, guess what, neuroblastoma. And she just had an infectious smile that people would just fall in love with Christy. The scammer stole Christy's image straight off the Thomas family's memorial website. I had one of the detectives tell me um, a while ago that it was almost like she knew my story better than I knew my story. She had read my journal entry so many times that it was like she had internalized it. And then when she would be calling this famous people, it was almost like she had convinced herself that she really was me. That's the sickest part about this to me. That is the part that when I start to talk about that, that's when I get really mad. That there were real kids, that there were real photos. Ironically, the photos helped unravel the mystery. So you pulled the data off some of these pictures. Right. These journal entries were in some ways her undoing because she created them. She didn't lift them from a blog. Buried in some of the digital images, location data from the camera they were taken on. When you enter it in, in Google Maps, it actually shows a location in Mongolia. A dead end at first. But it's just simply that Mongolia is on the opposite side of the world. And if you enter a negative sign there, you get the actual address. 206 Walnut Street. In Douglas, Wyoming, hometown of the jackalope, a mythical creature used to fool city slickers. Fitting mascot for a hoaxer's hideout. Hey there. You're Hope Jackson, huh? We found her at a KOA right. campground. We've been looking forward to meeting you. Finally, after eight months of searching for the woman responsible for toying with so many people's emotions, we're face to face with her. Hope Jackson, 37-year-old mother of two perfectly healthy kids. And you've never, God forbid, had the experience of losing a child. No. No. I hope I never do, yeah. Did you not think it was incredibly bad karma to be... Yes, yeah, I... Acting this well, out? Well, now looking back on, of course, yeah. We spent a whole day with her. She was contrite. I'm 100% responsible for this, and I have to live with that every day of my life. Philosophical. I just hope this brings some sort of healing, that's all. For not only, you know, for the people that hurt, but for me as well. Showed flashes of anger. All I can do is apologize, which I've done, and I, I can't, I can't make them like me or forgive me. And broke down in tears again and again. Horrible, shameful, I hurt, you know, I wrong. One, we confronted her with an email she wrote Angela Thomas, promising she would stop using Christie's picture. I hope to learn how to be a better person and mother. I don't expect forgiveness. I just wanted to say how sorry I am, and I will not be using your photos ever again or anyone else's. Thank you for your time. And you sent that? Mm-hmm. But it was after you sent that that you first contacted Kim and Brad. Right. After saying to this woman, I will not be using your photos ever again and or I anyone never, else's. I didn't use her photos ever again. I never or anyone well, else's. I mm -hmm. If you lied to her, why should we believe you now? I'm not asking you to believe me because 
like I said, it's my actions are going to speak louder than my words are. She insists for her, it was never about gifts or money. I never asked for anything from them ever. Does it matter to you that she didn't ask for money? Yeah, I think that's sicker. I would have, I would have welcomed the thought that this was something as simple as a woman Looking scheming, to scam somebody. yeah, scamming you. That'd be, that'd be. That's un, then it's like, okay, well, at least money's involved. When she was all along really careful to not do that, then you realize she's just enjoying this. It may be morally wrong to fool someone online, but it's not necessarily illegal. She hadn't technically committed a crime because she didn't ask for money. <laughs> um, and she, that shows you what a pro she was. But it turned out Hope Jackson made one little mistake that finally caught up with her. Okay, let's figure out which laws she broke, because she has to have broken something. What was her mistake, and what were the consequences when we come back? Douglas, Wyoming, hometown of the jackalope, a jackrabbit with antlers. In reality, there's no such thing. This quiet western town is also home to another fictitious creature, an internet hoaxer peddling a phony sob story about an eight-year-old daughter dying of neuroblastoma. She fooled Brad and Kim Paisley and many other celebrities. Hope Jackson had gotten away with it for years. It wasn't like I wanted to maliciously hurt people or I know that seems hard to believe but it's true and may well have kept going if not for an intervention from law enforcement I don't think she thought at any point that law enforcement would track her down in Douglas Wyoming that's Kevin Lovewell the lawman who tracked her down to a specific address in Douglas right where the GPS markers on those digital images said she would be Hotel Labonte and this is where she was staying Yes, she was You staying, tracked her here. Tracked her to here. Upstairs in room 205. He says when he confronted her, she didn't deny it. Yeah. Easiest confession I probably ever got out of somebody. You have the right to remain silent. This is an audio tape of one of her first interviews with police. I had no idea he was going to phone me. I never asked for him to phone me. Even though it's fraud, it can be extremely difficult to prosecute someone for misrepresenting themselves online unless money changes hands. The law has not caught up to the technology. In Hope Jackson's case, she made one crucial mistake. She did take something of monetary value. Brad Paisley's song, Amazing Grace. The performance itself has value. It does. Even if you're just singing down the phone. Right. Because it was Brad Paisley singing Amazing Grace, turns out it was worth a lot. $5,000 or more. At that point, it made it a felony. Hope Jackson pled guilty to theft of services and served jail time. This was Al Capone being caught on tax evasion. It so. really, really was, yeah. So. Now she's out on probation. And I'm horribly sorry, you know, for all those people that I hurt. Hope Jackson told us for her, money was never the object. What did you get out of it? Just that moment of being special. And that's all it was. In a voice on the other end of the phone. Uh, yeah. And at that moment, you feel like nothing else matters. It does seem like depression is a big part of her life. We asked psychiatrist Dr. Mark Feldman to watch her interview. Hope Jackson's not his patient, but he said he has seen this type of behavior many times before. In fact, he was the first to diagnose this as something he calls Munchausen by Internet, a mental illness. What are the symptoms? Basically, it refers to anybody who goes online, either feigns or exaggerates some kind of medical or psychological illness because they're after sympathy. To hear Hope Jackson describe it, she couldn't help herself. I guess it's kind of like being a drug addict. You know what I'm saying? In some sense, um, most people don't want to be a drug, drug, drug addict. Most people know it's wrong and it makes them feel very bad about themselves. But that minute that they do it, it's like the whole world is okay at that exact moment. One question for Dr. Feldman, did the internet enable that addiction? My sense is the internet has made this behavior explode. Because you can be anybody right. online. Yes, the, the anonymity is seductive, and yet the intimacy is equally seductive. 
He knows of more than 100 of these cases and thinks that's just the tip of the iceberg. Have you really stopped? Yeah, 100%. The Paisleys are willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. I hope that the people around her will encourage her to get help. I root for her to, to be a, a case study that never does it again. But they feel the law needs to be changed. Let's work on that as a society. Let's make it illegal to use someone's child's photo for something that they aren't allowing you to use it for. You know? And then her laugh will come back to me. So. Angela Thomas, whose real daughter's picture was stolen, says she's worried those lies could make people like the Paisleys think twice about being compassionate. The next little girl does want to have Brad Paisley sing to them. I hope they haven't had their hearts hardened. The Paisleys insist that's not going to happen. But next time, they'll probably bear in mind Brad's slightly jaded hit song. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Douglas, Wyoming. What a fascinating and scary story. Thanks to David Wright, producer Alyssa Litoff, and the rest of the team for that report.